we continue with oscillations. In the last lecture, we learned how to combine two simple harmonic motions when they are in the same direction or when they are in the perpendicular directions. Here, we consider what are known as damped and forced oscillations. Let me remind you that each system is able to oscillate when excited, to oscillate with a characteristic frequency, which is called natural frequency. When the oscillations are damped or forced, then this changes. Let us see in what sense this, these changes take place. So far, we have dealt with oscillations which continue for a long time without any decrease in amplitude. In real life, all oscillations except those forced to maintain a certain amplitude suffer decrease in their amplitude. The decrease in amplitude is caused by dissipation of energy due to frictional forces. A simple way to demonstrate damping is to add a large cardboard disc to an oscillating weight. Let me show you this. Here is an oscillating weight. We have a spring and a weight. It oscillates. If this disc is removed, it will oscillate with natural frequency, which you know is root of k by m. But when I attach a very large disc to it, then the friction due to air becomes considerable. And therefore, the it affects the amplitude of these oscillations. We have seen already the equation of a simple harmonic motion is d to y by dt square plus omega squared y equal to 0. Now, for small velocities, the frictional forces are proportional to velocity itself. So, therefore, we introduce a term containing velocity. So, this equation is modified for the damping case to d to y by d square plus 2 b d y by d t plus omega squared y. This factor 2 we shall see is very useful, but otherwise it does not affect anything, where b is a constant representing the forces. Since we know that the oscillations will be damped, we, we have this experience whenever there are frictional forces, the oscillations are damped. We try a solution of the type y equal to e raised to power sigma t, where sigma is a positive parameter. We substitute this solution into the equation d to y by dt square plus 2 b d y by dt plus omega squared y equal to 0. And we get this sigma squared plus 2 b sigma plus omega squared into e to the power sigma t equal to 0. Now, e to the power sigma t obviously is not 0 because that is our solution. Therefore, from this equation we get this equal to 0. And this is a quadratic. It will have two solutions, two values of sigma. And these two values are given by the quadratic equation you can solve minus b plus minus b squared minus omega squared, square root of that. The general solution therefore, will be y equal to e minus b t minus b t minus b is common a then we take the plus sign or minus sign e to the power minus b squared minus omega squared under root times t and we take the plus sign here b into e to the power b squared minus omega squared under root times t. a and b we have introduced as two constants which are determined from initial conditions that is conditions at t equal to 0. And we can determine this if you know the conditions that y equal to 0 and dy by dt is equal to 0. Anyway, so let us go to these conditions. Suppose the resistance is very high that is b is greater than the omega the, the angular frequency. Such oscillations are called over damped oscillations. Obviously, over damped because damping is too much the frictional force is too high. In this case, b squared minus omega squared is a real number because b is larger than omega. Therefore, this square root is a real number. Let us call this c and then the solution can be written as y equal to e to the power minus b t into a e raised to the power minus c t plus b e raised plus c t. Notice that there is no oscillatory term you know from trigonometry that oscillatory terms are represented by e to the power i theta. e to the power i theta is cos theta plus i sin theta. There is no term of this kind e to the power i theta here and therefore, there is no oscillating system. So, what happens is if we plot this, we find that the initial displacement just decays. 
it rises and then decays or decays or it rises and then decays. So, no oscillations take place. You remember this case is B greater than omega, this is the over damped oscillations. Then B could be equal to omega, this is called critically damped oscillations and if B is equal to omega, then those two roots are equal to 0. For this purpose, the solution is not easy. We have to go back to the original equation and then solve it. Anyway, do not worry about the solution. What we have is that the displacement just dies down. Very quickly, it comes to 0. So, no oscillations again take place. The interesting case is when B is less than omega. That is when resistive forces are small, when dissipation is small and these are called under damped oscillations. They are damped, but under damped oscillations. In this case, B squared minus omega squared is imaginary because B is less than omega and therefore, this square root gives us an imaginary term. So, if we substitute this solution that is minus B t into all this, this solution, if we now take B squared minus omega squared as imaginary quantity, we get this solution y equal to e minus b t into a e raised to power minus i. Now, i is for imaginary and then square root of omega squared minus b squared into t plus b e raised to power again i imaginary quantity square root of omega squared minus b squared t. You see now we have e to the power i theta, e to the power minus i theta etcetera these terms and these are oscillatory terms. These are cos terms and sin terms and therefore, there are oscillations in this case, but the amplitude decreases E minus B T as time increases, this term decreases E minus B T, this decreases. So, amplitude decreases. While the oscillations take place, the amplitude goes on decreasing. We will show you by graph. The oscillations take place as before, but the amplitude it was here then smaller, then smaller, then smaller, then smaller and so on. The amplitude is decaying and this is the decay curve so to say exponential e to the power minus beta t uh, b t. So, this is the curve which shows that the amplitude is decreasing, the amplitude is damped and uh, uh, the solution if we use these initial conditions y at time t equal to 0 is 0 and dy by dt at time t equal to 0 is 1, then we can write the solution as y equal to e minus b t sin omega dash t divided by omega dash. What is omega dash? Omega dash is this term omega squared minus b squared under root. So, you see that the frequency of oscillation has also been affected by damping, although to a very small extent, but the frequency of oscillation has also been affected. It is now slightly less. Not only the amplitude decays, the frequency also becomes slightly smaller when the frictional forces are introduced in the equation of oscillation. We shall learn later that an electrical circuit with an inductor and with a capacitor and resistor also is a damped oscillator. The equation uh, for the charge on the capacitor is L d to q by d t square plus r d q by d t plus 1 by c q. You can see this equation is the same form that d 2 y by d t square minus 2 b d y by d t and so on. This equation is of the same form. Therefore, we have the conditions for over damping r by 2 L greater than uh, the frequency which is 1 by square root of L c. Critical damping when the two are equal and under damping when r by 2 L is smaller than 1 by square root of L c. And the changed frequency because of this damping is 1 by L c minus r squared by 4 L square. Although r is very small, this change is very small, but the change is there. This is a circuit, this L, r, this is the source and this is c. So, we have a circuit which contains the uh, resistor, the uh, uh, capacitor and the uh, L and these are the conditions for and this is how the oscillations decay. In this case B is R by 2 L and this shows E to the power minus B T. 
forced oscillations. So, so far we were studying damped oscillations where the frictional forces damped oscillation that is they reduced the amplitude uh, progressively. Now, in this case we have a force which is which maintains the oscillations. Let us take an example. Suppose you are on a swing and your friend gives you a push every time you swing past her. The oscillations of the swing are maintained by a periodic force. You are every time you are giving a push, every time the, your friend passes by you, you give a push, passes by you, you give a push. So, you maintain the oscillations. These oscillations are called forced oscillations. They are maintained by a periodic force. And the equation, you see, this is acceleration d 2 y by d t square. Therefore, I divide f by m, m is the mass of the system and we get this equation. This you remember the equation was for the damped oscillations. We have kept the damp damping term because there is no system which is perfect, which does not contain damping term. So, we keep it here and so our equation is d 2 y by d t square plus 2 b d y by d t plus omega squared y equal to f cos omega f t. Omega f is the forcing frequency. It is a frequency of the applied force. We have a periodic force which keeps on pushing the system periodically and maintains the oscillations of the system. And we know again from experience that ultimately the natural oscillations will die down because of damping. And what would be left would be the forced oscillations because the system is forcing it. Therefore, these oscillations will be there. So, we try a solution of this kind y is equal to c, c is some constant cosine omega f t you see the frequency of the system is now the forcing frequency and not the natural frequency minus delta where c and delta are constants to be determined by the substituting the solution in the equation of motion. So, we substitute the solution in the equation of motion and what we get when we substitute we will get terms cosine omega f t minus delta sin omega f t minus delta and we expand the cosine terms and sine terms and then collect coefficients of cos omega f t and sin omega f t and what we get is this cos omega f t into this big bracket sin omega f t into this big bracket and this is equal to 0. And what does this imply? This means the coefficient of cos omega f t and coefficient of sin omega f t they must be independently 0. So, we equate them to 0 each of them and we get from those two equations 10 delta 2 b omega f by omega square minus omega f square where omega is the natural frequency and omega f is the forcing frequency and the constant c which is the amplitude is f by the square root of omega square minus omega f squared plus 4 b squared omega f square and the complete solution now we can write complete solution is this c into cosine omega f t minus delta where delta is given by this. So, this is a solution of the forced oscillations and let us see what happens. The amplitude as I have told you is c which is given by this and we see that if this term omega squared minus omega f square this becomes smaller then c would increase. Let us find out where c would be maximum and how do we do that? By minimizing the denominator. How do we minimize the denominator? We differentiate the denominator with respect to omega f and put it equal to 0 and that gives us the, the condition for maximum amplitude and we do that and we find that the amplitude would be maximum when the driving or forcing frequency omega f and equals omega r. Omega r is the resonance frequency. We will define resonance in a moment. Omega r is omega squared minus 2 b square. Natural frequency square minus 2 b square. 2 b remember b is the damping term and square root of that is omega r. So, when omega r is equal to omega f we get the maximum amplitude. It is not infinite, but we get the maximum amplitude. I will show you. You see this is for various para b equal to 0.1, b equal to 0.2, b equal to 0.3. You can see as the resistive term, as the frictional term increases, the maximum amplitude becomes smaller. This becomes, this curve becomes flatter and flatter. 
But if this term is small, we have a peak here. Peak at omega equal to omega r, omega f equal to omega r. So we have a peak, and that is the amplitude at resonance. The amplitude of forced oscillations rises sharply when the natural frequency of the system is very close to the frequency of driving force. This omega r is very close to the natural frequency, and when this omega r is equal to omega f, we have got the maximum amplitude. The phenomenon of occurrence of a large amplitude in oscillating systems is called resonance. If there is no loss of energy in an oscillating system that is b equal to 0, then resonance occurs when the driving frequency is exactly equal to the natural frequency. In that case, the amplitude is infinite. However, as I said before, there is always a damping term, there is always a frictional force present, dissipation is always there and therefore, the amplitude does not become infinite, but it becomes very large. In this lecture, we have developed further the concept of a longitudinal wave and a transverse wave. We have also learned the important principle of superposition that if there are two waves traveling on the same string say in the same direction or in the opposite direction, then we can get the resultant by adding displacement at each point. This gives rise to what are known as standing waves. On a string, if you have waves of the same frequency and same amplitude, then you find that the waves traveling in opposite directions, they interfere and the string is broken up into loops and each loop now oscillates independently. These are called standing waves. In the next lecture, we shall try to explain again the formation of standing waves. This is a very important topic and we shall try to explain it again and we shall also do some exercises to, to consolidate the concepts learnt in these two lectures.